This is the Sabbath of the Lord. A blessed day. We enter into his presence with thanksgiving, with joy in our hearts. Depression is gone. Anxiety is deleted. We no longer tremble before the devil. God is in control. Happy Sabbath to everyone. And may the Lord bless you. Today is a special day. Special because it's the Sabbath. And that's why we, let us just go into God's word. And see exactly what God would like to tell us today. Because there's something special when God talks to his people. When the Bible speaks to us. When we find solace and consolation and help and comfort from the word of God. Wherever you go, you may have to pay. You have to pay to find comfort. But as we come here today, God will speak to us. That's why we want to say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Today's sermon is entitled, The Scream. The Scream. The Cry. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, we find the hearers of the gospel in the presence of Peter. And the Bible tells us that uh, the apostle Peter, speaking boldly to a multinational gathering in Jerusalem, he was talking about Jesus Christ and he was pointing out the sins committed against Christ, and when his hearers were touched in their heart, they asked him, what shall we do? We heard what you say. We heard the message. We understand that he was killed. We understand that he was resurrected. But us, what shall we do now? And Peter answered, repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peter had an answer for the world. And let me ask my church today, can you hear the world screaming? Can you understand what is happening in our world, in this world? You see, there is a great artist, a Norwegian artist, uh, Edvard Munch, who 1893 painted a spiritual <coughs> thing called the scream. In German, he called it the scream of nature. It's the agonizing face uh, of an individual that has become one of the most iconic images of art. It is seen as the symbolism of the anxiety of the human condition. The scream. The scream. Can you believe that? That painting by, by Edvard Munch was sold a few years ago for almost $120 million. The world understands that something is wrong. That painting that represented, that symbolized, that symbolizes rather the, the, the anxiety and the suffering of the world is sold for $120 million. Then there is another artist. I'm very interested in him. Uh, his name is Jean-Michel Basquiat. He's an American, a Haitian-American artist. Uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat's painting, The Skull. And you should see almost all his paintings have to do with a skull, with gnashing teeth. Something almost gruesome. But society understanding the sufferings of man they embraced it. And Jean-Michel Basquiat's painting was purchased 
by a, a, a Japanese, Japanese art lover for $110 million. The scream and the scroll. Most expensive paintings ever. Society understands. Society wants to express itself. And my friends, today it is time for our church to open her ears or his ears or to understand that the world is screaming. The world is screaming. And Peter was asked, what shall we do? My brothers and sisters, it is imperative for us to understand we must have an answer. The church can no longer remain silent. The church cannot be detached. The church cannot be indifferent. The church must not look confused. The church must have a message. The church must stand. The church must rise and bring a message of hope to the world. My friend, when I looked at the word of God, I understand, yes, the church must speak. And there are different steps. There are different ways that the church must speak. And why the church must speak. And how the church must speak. The church at this time, my friends, my brothers and sisters, who are witnessing what is going on in the world, who are basically, we are victims of what is going on in the world. What shall we say? What shall we do? The scream of the world. The cries of the world. The skulls of the world. What shall we do? First and foremost, the first act of the church. Number one is to look within. To look inside. To look what the church has in her hands. To see what the church has in her heart. Look within. And Paul understood when he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 to 22. In fact, that was one of the verses in our Sabbath school lessons. He said, but as, as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. Yes to our growth. Yes to our victory. Yes to our conquest. Yes to prayer. Yes to victory. The God we serve, the Jesus we serve is yes. Then he continued by saying, it's time for the church. To say amen. And verse 21 says. You know what I like here. It says that uh, we and so through him. The amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. He says here. The church must say let it be. Let it be. And verse 22. Whether 21. Says that now. It is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. That's where we stand today. God has his deposit in us. God says, yes, you can do it. You have it in you. Your mom didn't give it to you. Your nationality didn't give it to you. The government did not give it to you. Your intelligence did not give it to you. God gave it to you. That deposit, the Holy Spirit of things to come. Hallelujah. You're not alone. Church, look within. You're not alone. 
and the Holy Spirit is given to you as a deposit of things to come. Mog will come soon. God will do exceedingly abundantly for his church above and beyond whatever the mind can conceive. This is the God we serve. It's time for the church in these dark days to look within and understand a deposit has been made through the Holy Spirit in our hearts. That's why we say amen. You see, in Adventism, there, there is a verse that was very popular. And I pray that we go back to it. That's Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. And I love it. And I, I, I love it. You know, uh, you know it's, it's just Christ. <laughs> Christ in you. The hope of glory. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So the church has the spirit, Christ, the message of Christ in our hearts. What shall we do? It's time for the church to sit and look that the church is loaded through the gift of the Holy Spirit. What? Shall we do? The church also, the second step, the church must look behind. What have you learned from the past? Romans 15, 4 reminds us that everything that was written was written for our instructions. Romans 15, verse 4, which is important. Everything that was written was written for our instruction for us who have come at the end of times we must go back and look at the lives of those who were blessed by god for everything everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance of the encouragement of scriptures we might have hope look back and see how god did it in the past go back to the red sea Go back to Egypt. Go back to the desert. Go back. Think of manna falling from heaven. Think of water coming out of rocks. Think of serpents biting. And a single look brought healing and restoration. Look back. Look back and understand that the God you serve is a mighty God who answers the prayers of his children, who asks for no advice from no one, my double negative. Look back, my friends. There's no reason to sit looking confused and anxious. No. Look inside. God has made a deposit. Look. Look behind. And you will see. What God has done in the past. What he done. What God did for Abraham. That old man. Of whom nature said. It's over. But nothing is ever over. Over. Until God speaks. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't ever allow anyone. To tell you things are over for you. God has not yet spoken. You shut up about my life. For the life of my, my children. Of my family, of my church, God's people. Look back. Look back. You know something? Let's look at the third step. Look around you. Hmm. Things are falling apart. No one would have ever imagined. That a country like America would be shut down. Huh. Manhattan never sleeps. Manhattan slept. The city that never sleeps slept. Because when God say time, says it's time to sleep, you sleep. When God says things are over, things are over. Look around you. There is confusion. There is fear. People are trembling. 
School officials do not know whether or not to open schools. Each individual is, is a potential assassin of his neighbor. Everyone is suspected of, of carrying the virus. We wear gloves and masks. And there's a new expression, PPEs. Where do we go from here? My brothers and sisters, look around. In Luke chapter 21, verses 25 to 28, the Bible tells us, that in fact, Jesus was talking to his friends, to his disciples, and gave them some clear instructions regarding the time in which they live. In verse 28, he said, When these things begin to take place, stand up, stand up, and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. God's church has nothing to fear for the future except that we forget the way the Lord has led us in the past. The fourth step is to look ahead. <coughs> look ahead. Ha. The church of prophecy. We know what's going to happen. That's why we are not afraid. The kingdoms of the world are going to become the kingdom of Christ. Hallelujah. The little stone will be detached from the mountain and will hit the statue and the, the rock and the stone will become will become a big and high and wide and heavy mountain that will fill the earth that's what we know that's what daniel told us jeremiah told us ezekiel told us and jesus our lord confirmed everything let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. In my father's house there are many mansions. I will come back for you. Look ahead of you. Understand that the beast, the image of the beast, the dragon, they all will be thrown in the lake of fire. We know what's going to happen. While the world is screaming, while the world is crying, while the world is showing signs of anxiety and confusion, lift up your head, my church, and understand that the future is on our side. Woo! The future is on our side. God is on our side. Nothing to fear. What shall we do? They ask Peter, and the world is asking us the same questions. What else shall we say? You know, Sister White made a statement I'd like to paraphrase when she said, at the end of all things, when we start looking at the things, the events, the circumstances that have caused us a lot of griefs and sorrows, and pains and sufferings, when we look at them in glory, we will understand that they were the ones that God used to take us out of our personal struggles. They were the ones that help us grow spiritually. When we get, look ahead. Look ahead. What did I say earlier? I say one, the church must look within. The grace of God in his heart. The Holy Spirit given as a deposit. The church must look behind and understand and try to understand what happened in the past. And, and, and discover that God did it all. When things looked impossible for Joseph, God did it. For Moses, God did it. Look around you and see a confused world. And at this time to understand that God will have the last word. That's why as a church, we must look ahead of you. And the 
study the prophecies. The prophecies. Understanding things will fall apart, yet God's kingdom will soon descend. But we must also say, we must look besides. Besides. And understand uh, what are the resources that God has placed around us that are available to us. Look beside you and see. You, we are equipped to reach the world. I'm preaching on Zoom. I'm now on YouTube. I am on Facebook. We can be on Twitter, Instagram, and so on. So many platforms. Look, beside you, men and women equipped and dedicated to spread the gospel around the world. Look around you. All the satellites ready to beam the message of deliverance to a dying world. Look around you. That's technology. Now look around you. Every time you see a horse, every time you see a donkey, every time you see a cat, every time you see a dog, you must remember Balaam's ass. That donkey that spoke. God is never short of options. God is always able to do what he says that what he says that he would do. Look around you. Very soon, maids and servants, boys and girls, all men and all women will have dreams and vision. God's team is ready to go. Look around you, my friends. Look around and understand that we are ready to go. Praise God. And above all, take of Joel too. That's what God says. The, the people you look, you see them, they look weak. God is going to use them. Huh. You know something? You have to look also above you. Just like Jacob. In his dream, it's a moment, moment of quarantine, in a moment of isolation. He was sequestered all by himself. While we are quarantined, look above and you'll see God sitting on top of the ladder. I love that. God sits. He controls. God is in control. If, you have, if there's anything that you must remember in this life, I'd like to tell you, G-I-I-C, God is in control. The geek squad of the living God. God is in control. Look above and see who's controlling the affairs of the world. Look around. Who can enter into, into parliaments? Who would have imagined that the arrogant people in the world, those who thought that they were God, could be brought down on their knees just talking trash because when you turn your back to God when you exploit God's people when you disrespect the humanity of man when you trash the poor when you when you put immigrants in jail for no reason when children are being incarcerated and put in cages like animals God will stand and declare stop and understand that I'm God Look above. Your destiny is, is not in the hands of man. Your destiny is in the hand of God. A loving God who cares for you and for me. Blessed be his name. Look above. Genesis 28. God is on top of the ladder. Revelation Tells Revelation 4, Revelation 5, 
trust God sitting on his throne. Daniel 7, God, the ancient of days, a senior citizen with experience and love, longevity and creativity. He rules, he speaks and things happen. He orders and there exists. He talks to whales and snakes and donkeys and birds. The world is his and the fullness thereof. Look above. You are not serving a winkling. You're not serving a weak God. You're not serving a lame God. You're not serving an absentee God. You are serving a living, all-powerful, all-loving, an omniscient God. The God you serve is eternal. Look. And my friends, I'd like to invite you to take the last look, the last look, the final look, the final look, the final look that John took in Revelation 7. After this, <laughs> After this, Revelation 7, verse 9. I first, after this, I looked, and there before me a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, every nation, every tribe, people, and language. There's no race, black and white, no. That's a men's creation stuff. Standing before the throne <laughs> and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palms, branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation become, belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Oh, that's the final look and I saw and you may envision yourself in that crowd you don't have to be fighting over 144,000 are you one of them that's, that's God's decision as long as I am around the throne isn't that beautiful to see all those people Whose funerals were held here at Mount Vernon SDA Church. The last ones we have, our loved ones we lost, they are going to be there. Look, they are there, white robes, palm in their hands. While the world is screaming, What shall we do? As a church, it's time to look within and understand the deposit has been made. It's time to look behind and to understand what God did in the past. What he did in the past, he can do it again now and he will do it in the future. Look around you and see things are falling apart. No security anywhere. Look around you. Look ahead of you. Look ahead and understand prophecy. Look, look beside you. And see all the resources that are available. Everything that God is going to use. And beyond. Look above. And see God controlling things. And look. The last look. The crowd. Of the redeemed. That's why today. I'd like to invite you. To ask God. To open your eyes. So that you can see. So that you experience no fear, no anxiety. You don't have to tremble. Today is a day of deliverance. If there, if there is anyone at the sound of my voice who would like to give his or her life to God, please call the number on the screen. Just immediately after the service, you will see a phone number on the screen. You can call us. 
will pray with you. We will study the Bible with you. We will lead you to understand that this world is not our home. That the presidents and the prime ministers and the parliaments and the congresses of the world, they do not have the final words on the destiny of the world. Do you understand? That's why we look so excited. We are happy. The church is in the right spot right now. The best spot ever. We have the answer. The world is screaming. The world is shrinking. The world is falling apart. The world is imploding while the cities are exploding. We have no fear. God will have the last word. Let us pray. Father in heaven, bless your church. Bless each one of us. Keep us under your care. May we walk faithfully in you and with you being led daily by the Holy Spirit. Help us to catch the vision of eternity so that we do not tremble before the enemies. When things start falling apart, when governments are running away from their responsibilities, when health officials do not know what to do, when school officials are in total confusion, help us to remember that you are in control. Keep us under your care. As we pray now, we pray, oh God, for a special healing for someone who's listening to us, who's watching this program. As the individual extends his or her hands toward you by faith, Father, let your spirit come down. Let power descend from heaven to bring healing and in restoration to the broken souls of humanity or to that person, wherever he or she might be. Deliver us from evil and keep us under your care. For we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you.